Hello everybody, uh, I'm Suborno Isaac Berry, uh, and today I'm here at New York University with Professor Sylvan Capel. He's a very famous topologist, and I just had a short meeting with him regarding college applications, so I wanted to ask him a little bit about his childhood and what inspired him to go into topology, because math is a very big tree and topology is a very small branch. I would say that... Uh... Topology has rich interactions with many, many other areas of mathematics. Uh, well, it's true in mathematics in general that it's very interconnected. In fact, it's interconnected in ways that you don't expect. So sometimes you could be working in one area of mathematics, and then it turns out that in order to make progress, you need to build a bridge to some other area of mathematics that it, at first looks totally unconnected. And then it's amazing when you build such bridges, they can be a big surprise, even a shock, and they can connect up areas of mathematics or areas of science that uh, you didn't think would be connected. You would have thought that you could study just one of them and you could ignore the other. And then when there's this bridge, you discover that it's a highway that can be used to go back and forth from one branch to another. And developments in one area can richly influence developments in another area. And you never know which way is going to turn out to be the more useful from A to B or from B to A. So anyway, uh, topology is a substantial branch of mathematics. It's not the one in which most mathematicians work, but it's had, especially in the last hundred years, a very big influence on many areas of mathematics in terms of their perspective, their development, and also in terms of relations to theoretical physics, I would say. What inspired you to go into topology instead of anything else? Okay, so I, I, first of all, uh, so I'll say a little bit about my background. So I was born in Belgium, in Brussels. Uh, my parents were survivors of the Holocaust in Belgium. My parents barely survived. My grand, several of my grandparents were killed, and my uncles, and many of my uncles and aunts. And I was born right after the war in Belgium, uh, in 1946. We came to America uh, when I was three in 1950. Uh, and uh, I grew up mostly here, but I am, speak several languages, including French as my first language, actually. Uh, I grew up here, I, well, I loved math and science from earliest on, and I liked thinking about math for myself and solving problems like figuring out formulas, first four arithmetic series, then geometric series, and so on. Uh, I didn't know there was such a thing as a mathematician, but I got interested in it. And I was pursuing it. So by the time I was in high school, uh, I had a lot of interest in science and uh, a budding interest in math, but not really a realization of what it was fully. Uh, but by the time I was midway through, and I liked history also. I've always been interested in history, and I've always done very extensive reading in history uh, and uh, different aspects of history and of many different, the history of many different parts of the world and their cultures. I've always read a lot about. But, but then in high school, at some point, uh, I somehow stumbled, bumbled into finding out about group theory. And group theory is a branch of algebra that I fell in love with right away. And so I began to think about uh, problems in group theory midway through high school. Uh, and I didn't really have anybody to guide me at that point. I didn't know any mathematicians. I was a student at Bronx Science, which had a good math and science background, but not really anybody who knew group theory. Uh, so I studied it more or less on my own and re read some books on it and so on. And then by the time, and, then, and so a lot of my intellectual life was not uh, especially in school structured. Uh, I benefited from school, no doubt, but it was, you know, something I did on my own to a great extent. And then... Uh, in my last year of high school, I did a project on group theory, uh, which I submitted to the, uh, there's something called the National Science Talent Search. In those days, it was run by Westinghouse Corporation, later for many years by Intel. Now it's being sponsored by Regeneron. And well, I won the top national prize in it. That was a scholarship to college. So by that point, it seemed plausible that I would become a mathematician. I was already seriously thinking about it. And then I was an undergraduate at Columbia. And, uh, well, I've been very lucky my whole life in my teachers, in my students, and in my research collaborators. I've really had 
a wealth of, uh, of, of, of luck, of success and luck through all those. And I had wonderful teachers, some great mathematicians as my teachers, and Sammy Eilenberg, who was a, a, a legend, one of the giants of 20th century mathematics, and other great teachers I had. And then I've also had wonderful collaborators that I've worked with and wonderful students. I was so lucky, for example, I have a research collaborator that I've written at least 100 research papers with, and uh, I met him when I was an undergraduate, and we didn't get to know each other that well, but still it goes to show what luck I had, that already as a college student, I met uh, people that would I would still work, I, I, I was Zooming, he's now living in Italy, and I was Zooming with him to Italy this morning discussing a research problem we're, we're collaborating on. So I've been fantastically lucky in having uh, long-term relationships with teachers, with students, uh, former students, postdocs, young people that I've mentored, and research collaborators. Uh, undeserved good luck uh, has been uh, my, my lot in life, and I'm very grateful for it. So what has been your experience uh, as a professor at NYU? I'm starting now my 50th year as a professor here at Corand Institute. I have an endowed chair here. Uh, and, uh, well, being a research mathematician at a top university is a great life. As I think I've started to say to you earlier in our informal discussion earlier, you get to work with wonderful people. You work on things that interest you. You continue to intellectually grow your whole life. You don't stop. You learn new fields. You use what you already know to open up new ideas and possibilities to you. Uh, it's, uh... It's really, uh, uh, you know, they pay me for this. <laughs> they didn't. They didn't have to pay me. I would do it anyway for free. But I'm, I'm happy they pay me too and take good care of me. Uh, also, mathematics is the least political of all human uh, enterprises. Uh, so uh, there's it. I mean, there's always the issue in life. It's always a judgment about, for example, you judge what, what you should work on or what, other, what, what work other people are doing. And there's always a judgment to be made. Uh, but at least in mathematics, the fundamental facts of the issue are not in dispute generally, or after a while, they're not in dispute anyway. So there's, a, I don't say that everything's objective, but there's a large objective element that in most human activities. So there's less conflict, less tension, uh, it's a very happy way to live a life, uh, working on things that you think matter and that you care about. So I'm, again, grateful for that as well. Yeah, honestly, so many people think that, I guess, life as a mathematician is very hard or very boring, but uh, really bringing that sort of innovation is a very gratifying feeling. I would say it's tons of fun on top of everything else, actually. So I do a lot of my research, for example, and uh, I, I live and work here at NYU. In, there are lots of nice cafes around. I go with my research collaborators to a cafe, and we spend the afternoon talking and uh, discussing the things that interest us. And if we're stuck, we take a walk and then come back later and try and write up a little bit of see if we made any progress or not. You have to, one thing about being a mathematician, though, is you have to have a certain amount of tolerance for being stuck because the things you know, well, you do them. So you spend the rest of your time on what you're stuck on. So you have to have a certain amount of tolerance for frustration uh, as well. That's part of why I like working on short term, medium term, and long term projects. So they're not all stuck at any time, <laughs> all the time, anyway. A kind of funny. You have to be. Uh, you still have to be a little strong in the face of adversity. So, think, as a, as yeah. Anything, as in all human serious human endeavors, you have to have a certain uh, willingness to uh, work at it. And uh, and be, to be honest, I would also say realistically that if you're going on in pure mathematics, um, you have to know that the the you know the people i mean you have a both cooperative and competitive relationship with others in the field you cooperate with them a lot and also there's some element of competition as there is in all human endeavors uh uh i would say but uh generally it's a happy field with a ha with good relationships and uh i'm i'm field it's been, it's for me it's been a wonderful life to work in it and uh i'm very grateful for it 
thank you for that. Uh, and it's been a wonderful time having this uh, informal discussion. Thank you.